My hand skims along the once-secured concrete wall. Broken bits and pieces have crumbled to the floor. The now-forgotten structure was a resource full of hidden knowledge. Ashes of incinerated books leave only dusty remnants. I suppose history has a way of repeating itself. We always succumb to destroy what we fear or do not yet understand. Many other buildings have fallen to the same fate as this one. The reason I keep finding myself here is that one day I found a book untouched, and within its resilient tome was a slip of paper, a message written in dire need of warning. I am a survivor. Our world was torn apart, and the only weapon I had was my mind. Never will I lose sight of such vile and massive endings of so many. Voices still haunt my days, and their detached screams echo through my every night. Heed my words. Their evil is among us. Joshua, a survivor. Symbols I vaguely remember are scribbled along the note. My grandmother used to teach me that sigils were used for seals, protection, and many other purposes. I carefully fold the well-worn slip of paper and start to place it back in my pocket when two strong hands tug me backwards. Struggling, I land in his awaiting arms. They told me you were out gathering plants, not reading some old love note. A low chuckle escapes as he playfully flicks the paper still in my hand. Laughing at his foolishness, I quickly drop the note into my back pocket. It's not a love note, Raiden. I've told you that a thousand times already. He releases me with a teasing grin. Pushing away from him, I decide to razz him. It's a warning, you big jerk. Could be the last words of a dying man. Besides, why are you not at work? Raiden takes one threatening step toward me. What did you just call me, Celine? I know that expression. And I'm in trouble, so I make a run for it. Dashing through the enfeebling doorway, I race down the vine-covered steps, but before I could even reach the tree line, Raiden is chasing me down like a mountain lion on the hunt. Before I know it, I'm lying on the ground with him on top. Familiar with his kind of torture, I scramble to free myself. His hands grip my sides, pinning me in place, and then his malevolent fingers begin tickling me with no mercy in sight. My contagious laughter rivets throughout the simple woods as Raiden straddles over me. He taunts, Do you give up? Writhing beneath him, I try to speak, but it's no use. So instead, I nod, confirming my submission. His controlled hands measure their way up my body, and his affectionate lips explore mine. I love you, he declares, as I trace the features of his indomitable face. Those three small words, and only from Raiden, bring peace to my soul. As a hint of a giggle slowly ebbs away, I'm finally able to utter, I love you too. His arms cradle me. I dislodge a few pine needles from his auburn, Caesar-cut hair, wondering how he could have any attachment to the woods when I'm the one lying in a bed of it. He laughs at my baffled expression and shakes his head brushing the remains out of his hair with a hand. Eventually, he slumps over next to me and says, I see you're wearing the earrings your sister gave you for your birthday last year. They look good on you. Absently, I touch the tear-shaped diamond earring. It is the first time I have ever worn them. Normally, I'm not one to wear jewelry, especially anything expensive. But since my sister Bailey presented these as somewhat of a peace offering— I decided it's time to let the past wash away. Our family members traditionally hand down from one generation to another a small, locally-owned business. I was the next descendant in line. My sister, for whatever reason, thought it was she that should have inherited the shop, never considering the obvious, that I'm 28 and she has just turned 22, plus the fact she has never stepped a single foot in the place until it was turned over to me. So, to make my long story short, she quickly married an auditor and simply travels with him, shopping to her heart's content. This is why I now have a pair of fine, tear-shaped diamond earrings. So, do you think next time this year you will be ready for marriage, Celine? His deep, husky tone turns on every pulsating rhythm within me.